Do you want to hear things like footsteps better in Escape from Tarkov? Well, in our Tarkovology video today, we're going to be covering a few ways to do just that. We'll cover some software you can also use to help, and we'll cover why using EQ software like Sonar might actually do more harm than good, and at the end of the video, I'll tell you the single thing that made the biggest difference in my Tarkov audio experience. Those of you who've been following the channel for a while know that we do a lot of audio testing videos for Tarkov, like an exhaustive amount. You've also heard me tease a video where I include my audio setup and some tips on how you can improve your audio in Escape from Tarkov. Well, we finally found the time to sit down and make this video, so here we go. Before we get to the good stuff, let's do the disclaimers. User perception of audio is nearly entirely subjective. Just because something works for one individual doesn't mean it works for another. On top of that, I have zero audio experience outside of video games. I simply take pleasure in attempting to min-max with games that I enjoy, and understanding the audio in one of the most competitive first-person shooters in the world seemed like an important thing for me to get a firm grasp on. So, as a good friend of mine would say, this advice is worth about as much as you're paying for it. Let's start with the easy stuff. As far as your in-game settings go, there's really only one that's not entirely preference-based, but let's clear up some bullshit first. No, the overall volume slider is not bugged, and no, it does not somehow just decrease ambient noise. Click up there for a video that shows proof it's not a thing, and a more in-depth explanation as to why I have to mention such a ridiculous thing in this video. The two most important settings here are interface volume and binaural audio. The interface volume actually affects the interface out of RAID for the most part, but also how loud it is going in and out of your inventory in RAID as well. Of course, it's preferable to not go deaf every time you hit tab, so I highly recommend turning this down a bit. Binaural audio is the other setting which is an absolute must use in my opinion. This one is controversial and I know some people are going to disagree with this, but I would encourage those people to take a look at our binaural audio testing video and see for themselves. The TLDW is that the binaural click bug, which is somehow still around, outweighs any potential negatives you might experience from having binaural enabled. Which, by the way, those are becoming fewer and fewer each wipe, it seems. Moving past the in-game settings, let's talk about equalizer software like Sonar. The purpose of an equalizer is to boost or cut specific sound frequencies, and in first-person shooters, these are used almost exclusively to amplify footstep audio frequencies and cut the louder frequencies such as explosions or the report of a gun. My advice on these equalizers is just don't. In an ultra competitive game like Tarkov, so many of us are searching for that extra little thing that might provide us an, a competitive edge, but when it comes to EQs, there's just too much potential for them to do more harm than good, and there's a far more effective and safe way to achieve the end goal anyway, which we'll talk about later. For the most part, these are going to be detrimental in ways you'll probably never even notice unless you collect massive amounts of audio data with both your EQ on and off, which would probably lead you to the same conclusions I've drawn. The main issue is the soundscape in Tarkov. Unsurprisingly, it's quite complex compared to a lot of other first-person shooters, and its footstep audio is no different. For comparison, footsteps in games like Call of Duty and Overwatch do not cover nearly the range of frequencies as they do in Escape from Tarkov. Not only do you have a wider range of frequencies on the footstep audio in general, it also throws you different surfaces which can drastically change those frequencies. With more simple soundscape, it's far easier to isolate and boost the frequencies you want without too many ill effects in other areas. Unfortunately, it's the opposite with Escape from Tarkov. Because I know someone's going to argue that equalizers are good due to some streamer telling them they're good, allow me to show you some proof. On this screen, I'm going to place a spectralisomy analysis of about one minute of running in Call of Duty. The sound is normalized in the video editing software to be the exact same volume as our Tarkov footstep audio to keep these results accurate, and now we're going to show some running in Tarkov. Tarkov. As this test runs, I want you to completely disregard the bouncing green lines. They're only momentary representations of the sound frequency and it's kind of impossible for us to keep track of all of them. I know they're pretty and bouncy and green, but I want you to focus more on these tiny blue horizontal lines creeping up inside of those green lines. These represent the average sound amount in that particular frequency band, and when we're all done, we'll have something to compare to our Call of Duty averages. So when we take a look at the differences with 
Call of Duty, you have a steep incline into the lows and then an even presence all the way across the bands until we get about 750 hertz, at which point you see another uniform decrease all the way until we hit the 3.5 to 4 kilohertz bands. Whereas with Tarkov, you've got an uneven ascent into the lows and then we kind of see a, a sort of similar descent into the 750 range, but that's where the similarities completely stop. We see an uptick in the 1 kilohertz and then again in the 2 kilohertz and doesn't descend much at all until we reach the 6 kilohertz bands and then it drops off a cliff. Then we start to get the crunchy highs all over again from the concrete at the 9 to 10 kilohertz range. So you've got a far wider range of frequencies in these footsteps in Tarkov than you do in Call of Duty, and this really isn't even the tip of the iceberg. When we're running on wood, it introduces more lows. When we're running on metal, it's more mids and highs. When we hit linoleum or whatever the hell that plasticky surfaces it adds a completely different profile as well and then lastly the glass shifts a huge amount of sound into the highs the same is true of walking as opposed to running then you have to account for each headset on top of that because they all have different sound profiles in the game as well so there's just a ton of variables that change the sound in tarkov that we just can't account for. So now that you can see just how many frequencies varying footsteps can cover, I'm sure it's becoming a little more clear why isolating and boosting footstep frequencies is pretty much impossible in Tarkov. Additionally, if you're using EQ to cut sound in order to hear the other frequencies better because of a misleading video or some kind of sonar preset for FPS games that you're using, you're even worse off than if you're just using it to boost frequencies. Even if you cut the dips in the averages here on this spectralissimi graph, you're likely eliminating sounds that you need to hear, such as highs or lows from different surfaces, reloads, walking, tactical devices, bushes, grenade pins, the list goes on. Your favorite streamer recommending these things to you probably means well, but has no idea because they probably could play Tarkov on mute and still do fine, and they just have no idea they're actually hindering themselves slightly, or simply used a small amount of data to justify the use of the EQ. So, just don't. And after watching all this, if you still do, then I recommend only using a high pass at 125 hertz to cut out some of the lower ambient. And absolutely, whatever you do, don't cut sound, only boost. All right, now that that's out of the way, we've got two more things to cover, and then we'll get to the most important one last. Uh, next, I want to talk about compression and brick limiters from audio software. Compression with regards to game audio, in simple terms, is just making loud sounds quiet and quiet sounds loud. A brick limit is something that prevents sound from going past a preset volume on a specific channel. Earlier in the video, I mentioned a way to amplify footstep audio that worked better than equalizers and compression is what I was referring to. When we use compression in first-person shooters, it makes sounds like distant footsteps and faint audio louder, and things like grenades and gunfire quieter. Obviously, this allows you to hear the footsteps easier, and as an added bonus, it keeps you from going deaf since Tarkov's louder sounds can make you want to throw your headset across the room at times. And those loud sounds bring me to the brick limiter. Uh, the brick limiter allows us to set up a sort of cap on the highest volume any sound can make coming from a specific audio source. This allows us to turn our game volume up to what other FPS titles would consider a normal level without fear of bleeding from our ears after one raid. Now, if I try to walk you through how to set up all this software now, the video would be like over a half hour long, so we're going to put that into part two, which we'll publish hopefully shortly after the wipe, so be sure you subscribe and hit that bell if you want to catch that video. There are a handful of helpful videos out there right now from a few years back when this became a hot topic, so if you really want to get this done sooner than later, you can search YouTube for Compression, Escape from Tarkov, or something like that, and you'll probably find a few. I don't really use the setup those guys use, so our video will be a little bit different when it drops and we use voice meter. So what I will say for now is that compression is a double-edged sword. You may be making quiet sounds louder, but you're also losing depth of sound or the ability to determine distance, so this is something Thing you have to keep in mind when you're employing it. Far away footsteps will sound closer, and the gunshot audio will not be as useful for positional data on players around the map for that reason. Compression also makes rain nearly unbearable, and the ambient audio can get a lot louder if you have it turned up too high, unless you're wearing racks or contact fours. Because of all this, I'll generally only use a very small amount of compression, and turn it off completely sometimes if it's raining. This could also be why no major creator has put 
put a video out, or at least not to my knowledge, since those few videos a few years ago. It just really isn't all that useful, but it's far and away better than using an equalizer. The added benefit of making the game less murderous on your ears is also a plus which the equalizer doesn't provide. We'll obviously get more into that on the next video, so let's move on to what I feel is the most important thing you can do to improve your Tarkov audio experience. Sadly, gaming headset manufacturers seem to have figured out that gamers can at times be more concerned with flashy marketing, shiny or illuminated things, and neatly organized packages rather than actual quality audio components in their headsets. I myself have fallen victim to a few of these gimmicks while trying to get better audio in Tarkov, not the least of which was Razer's virtual surround sound, which turned out to be absolute dog shit. The fact of the matter is, unfortunately, most gaming headsets are just not good, and especially not good for what we need them to be good at, which is detail extraction or retrieval in Escape from Tarkov's complicated audio system. I'm not going to get too far into the why gaming headsets are bad debate, but there are plenty of videos out there to watch on the topic, and I'm going to put quite a few of them in the description below. I will say that the main reason most gaming headsets are bad for Tarkov is their driver. The driver in a headset is what converts the electrical signals the headset receives into sound waves. In general, gaming headset companies seem to drop the ball when it comes to using quality drivers in order to maintain their profit margin on the headsets while still providing gamers with their much-wanted bells and whistles. There are a slew of problems created by using poor drivers, but the one that affects Tarkov players the most is the lack of detail retrieval. Detail retrieval is extremely important to pick up lower volume frequencies amid the higher volume sounds occurring at the same time. This single and most likely cheap driver is producing all of the sounds at the same time and driving them towards your ear. As you can imagine, since this is all coming out at once from the same source, we definitely can lose some or a lot of sound nuance. This is why nearly every gamer has heard audiophiles say that most gaming headsets are bad, even if they've done cursory searches on which headset to buy. Don't get me wrong, there are of course exceptions to this rule in the upper ends of gaming headsets, but at the entry level there are almost none. So knowing that gaming headsets are bad because their drivers are bad, and knowing that bad drivers equals less detail retrieval, which is the worst possible thing to have in Tarkov, what do you do if you don't want to spend four to five hundred dollars on a headset? I'll give you a hint. There's a reason Flannel Daddy wears in-ear monitors while playing Escape from Tarkov. We already know that Tarkov sound covers a great amount of frequencies and lower volume sounds like distant footsteps will get lost by bad drivers in budget gaming headsets simply by allowing all of these sounds to get washed out by higher volume sounds around you. The only way to prevent that loss of detail is either improving the quality of the driver or having more than one of them. Improving the quality of the driver generally results in a far more expensive headset, but IEMs offer a cost-effective way to utilize additional drivers to gain more detail retrieval. The reason this is easier to do in IEMs is that the sound is entering the ear at one point, whereas with a headphone it covers the entire ear. If multiple drivers are installed into a headphone, it can create issues with sound imaging since the sound waves are coming from different locations in this earphone and everyone's ear is shaped differently. So this is generally avoided for that reason, and of course, one of the other reasons being cost. Gotta protect those margins, right Razer? But many IEMs come equipped with multiple drivers, and the best part is each one is dedicated to a specific range of frequencies. This means that the lows, mids, and highs are all handled by separate drivers, ensuring that no detail is lost in translation. For Tarkov, this translates to better separation of the sounds like footsteps, gunshots, and environmental noise, and with multiple drivers, Drivers, IEMs can more accurately reproduce the complex soundscape of Tarkov. The precise audio detail helps you pick out the subtle cues that are crucial for gameplay, such as a distant shuffle of an enemy, a faint clink of a grenade pin being pulled. This level of detail is often missed by gaming headsets, especially at distances where the volume of these sounds are relatively low compared to what is going on in your direct vicinity. IEMs also happen to provide excellent noise isolation, blocking out the noise around you and allowing you to focus solely on the game's audio. This is particularly useful in Tarkov, where every sound
sound can mean the difference between dying or not. The better you can isolate the game sounds from external noise, the more accurately you can pinpoint their origin. Despite their small size, IEMs can actually be really comfortable and usable for long gaming sessions. They're lightweight, often come with various sizes of ear tips to make sure it's a perfect fit, and this comfort means that you can game for literal hours without the discomfort that can come from over-ear headsets. As an added bonus, you don't get that massive divot in your skull from wearing headphones too much either. IEMs offer a cost-effective solution for high-quality audio. While high-end gaming headsets can cost several hundred dollars or more, you can find excellent multi-driver IEMs at a fraction of the price. This makes them an accessible upgrade for most players, and not a huge loss if you don't end up liking them. For the record, I am not sponsored, I hate sounding like a salesman, and I'm not saying that you should go out and buy these right now, but my current IEMs were only 49 bucks on Amazon. After all the audio testing, adjustments, attempted enhancements I've done for Escape from Tarkov, these were easily the best thing I've ever done, and it really isn't even close. For something so cheap, after spending probably over a thousand dollars on gaming headsets over the past 10 years, I was completely blown away. Admittedly, it's hard to tell a difference in Tarkov right away, but you'll notice the difference over time as you enter situations where you're picking up lower volume audio that you've never heard before. And if you're anxious to really hear the difference immediately, music is the best place to find it fast. I'll place a YouTube link to a great album which can be used to pretty easily tell the differences between the qualities of headsets because of its complexity of sound. Play this with your headset on, then put your IEMs on, and you're going to notice a difference more than likely unless you've got a really expensive headset. Rest assured, I'm not alone on this either. The general consensus among audiophiles is that from entry to mid-level, there's really nothing that beats multi-driver IEMs when discussing sound detail specifically. I'll even put a few links to some much more prolific creators than I, sharing my sentiments. Of course, the water gets a little muddy when we're talking about the upper end, but let's face it, that doesn't apply to 95% of the people playing Escape from Tarkov. I know I'm certainly not spending $500 to $1,000 on a headset, but if you're one of those people, this information might be a little bit less pertinent for you. To wrap things up, understanding and optimizing your audio setup in Escape from Tarkov can certainly provide a significant advantage. From in-game settings to avoiding the pitfalls of equalizers and finally upgrading to quality audio gear like IEMs, each step can help you hear your enemies before or better than they can hear you. Remember, audio perception is subjective and what works for one person might not work for another. The advice and insights shared here are based on my extensive testing, but again, I'm just some guy that likes min-maxing audio in Tarkov. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to stay updated with our latest content. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment below with your thoughts or any questions you might have about Tarkov's audio down below. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay safe out there.